Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Give this to Kevin. Who the fuck is Kevin? Yo, who's Kevin? My name's not Kevin, but I think I know how to help you out. So let's get started. figure out how to style the 2024 trends with clothes we already have. This is your host speaking and the host demands that we start with the high-rise trend. For this, all you need is high-rise bottoms, whether that's a skirt, pants, shorts, or something else. You also need a small dainty top or an oversized top, depending on how you want to style it. Now let me show you an example of how I style it. So this is the first way I would style this. I think this is adorable. It's very basic. It's very simple. This is definitely one of my favorite outfit recipes because we are styling the smaller, daintier, body-hugging top with something that is a little bit bigger or just high rise. And in this case, it is both wide legged and high rise. I'm definitely a high rise girly. I have never been a low rise jeans girly. When that trend was going on, I just, I never participated. I stayed high rise the whole way and I took the high rise road and here we are with the high rise pants. So very happy to finally have this comeback because now I can actually go to the stores and shop for clothes that I like. I highly recommend this format if you don't really like oversized on oversized styles or if you are a similar body type to mine. So if you're like me, you may want to use this kind of format where everything cinches in right at the waist and then flows at the bottom. And yeah, this is the first outfit example. I think it's cute, I think it's adorable, and I think this format works for anyone. This one literally reminds me of a pirate. And yes, we are working with a very, very high-rise skirt. I think this is a cute outfit that could probably be modified a little bit if I had a little bit more time, which I don't. This is an example of how to style it with something semi-oversized. Now, this is not oversized technically because of the corset top. This is definitely more on the experimental side, but I don't think it's bad. It's definitely just each to their own. Let me show you guys how this looks without the corset top on top of the shirt. Okay, here we go. I am praying to the gods that you are not seeing anything you shouldn't be seeing. But um, anyways, this is what it would look like oversized on oversized. Let me know if you prefer the last look or this look. I think they both serve their own different kind of look. And depending on what you're going for, you might go for this or you might go with another top on top. Either way, this is the oversized on oversized look, which I don't really prefer, but I have experimented with it more and it's not the worst look, especially if it's oversized on a long skirt. I feel like that just kind of adds a nice funky element. Oversized, not oversized. You get the gist of it. You can wear it with a smaller top or an oversized top. Really just depends on what you're doing. And look, you can even wear a high-waisted skirt with a dress if you want. I've done that before and it also looks cute. As you all know, the sporty bloket trends are no stranger to me at all whatsoever in any shape or form. If you don't know what bloket is, it is essentially bloat core and coquette paired together, and I have a lot of videos on this topic if you want to figure out how to style bloket for yourself. My favorite way of styling this is to usually wear a soccer jersey as the centerpiece or the defining color of the outfit. Now let me show you guys some examples. So here's the first jersey option, very basic. This is my preferred way of doing it. I don't really like overdressing my sportier outfits because they're supposed to not be super overdressed. If you wanted to style bloket in this way, I feel like this is a nice neutral way. This is also the more winter friendly way. You can definitely style it more girly with a shorter skirt and stuff, which I will show you next. But this is great if you want to style it for fall and winter, which um, it is winter right now. Also having the blazer on top is optional. You could totally do this without a blazer or maybe like add a vest instead. If you want to add something else, go ahead. You don't have to. This is just how I like to do it, especially because ooh, I'm showing some skin. Um, This is a short sleeved shirt. But yeah, you're your basic format can be pants or jeans or a skirt with a soccer jersey or maybe a sweater. It's very easy to style and I have so many videos on how to style it so I'm not going to get into detail here but go ahead and watch those videos and figure it out. You're on your own except you're not because I'm here for you guys. This is the skirt version. As you can see, I have a little skirt peeking from underneath the jersey. I don't usually like to tuck them unless it's with something super high-waisted, but if it's not high-waisted or if it's a smaller skirt underneath, I just like to keep it as is. This is like a cuter, daintier spring and summer outfit. I definitely don't recommend you going into the cold in this outfit. Like, are you kidding me? Do not come to New York City and wear this outfit and think you're okay. Nobody's freezing or getting frostbite. Not on this channel. This is the classic way of styling it. This is how a lot of the Pinterest girlies have been styling it. Just wearing a jersey on top of their smaller skirts and then wearing some high heels, Mary Janes, or sandals, or sambas. 
The subversive prep trend is another one making its rounds, and I think this one is a lot more realistic to style than some other trends. I'm looking at you, no pants trend. Anyways, this trend is still so undefined, fresh, and vague that I feel like you can figure out what it looks like to you specifically, whether that's wearing oversized polo shirts or maybe funky colors. For me, it usually looks like wearing vintage pieces with modern clothes. So this is my version of subversive prep. It is not the only version. I actually have so many different ways of how I style this. However, I have styled those on my channel so many times by now that I feel like you guys will get bored with that. Also, I may or may not have just wanted an excuse to style this top. Excuses, excuses, Um, that is me. Also, I feel like this kind of mixes a little bit of mermaid core and, you know, a little bit of that mermaidy sparkly element going on. I feel like because subversive prep really is just so new and fresh, we can really experiment with it, try different things with it. This is definitely more on the experimental spicy version of this look, but I don't think it's a bad look. It's just its own thing. And if you are not into sequins, then this is not for you. But also sequins are not exclusively a part of this trend. They're just something you could add because nobody has really defined what exactly Exactly this trend is supposed to look like. Preppy on its own is very basic, it's very structured, it's very formal. So if you break it down and add some of your own little touches, I feel like that kind of personalizes the trend to you. Punk Rococo is a new trend that actually just recycles the style of Rococo Punk. Rococo Punk combines late Baroque style, also dubbed as Rococo, from the 1740s to the 1770s with modern punk style. This is a very edgy and also kind of old timesy aesthetic, very much a princess core meets grunge. Essentially, this means flashy lavish outfits with punk elements added to them. I don't own anything super lavish, but for the sake of experimentation, I will take out my most lavish princess core like dress just for you guys. So if you weren't subscribed by now, me blessing your eyes in the next few seconds may just be a reason to hit that subscribe button. So here is the dress that has blessed your eyes. You may now subscribe. Thank you very much. This is the gorgeous dress, which is nothing like Punk Rococo, but we are trying our best with what we got, which is my favorite statement, I swear. As you can see, I have totally tucked in a part of this dress as to show some leg, show some of that sexy, sexy ankle and knee and thigh, maybe a little bit too much, honestly. This is just my version of it. Obviously, I could do a lot better, maybe if I could pin this up. I did attempt it, but unfortunately, the dress is so heavy that it did not stay up. So the only thing I could do was uh, zhuzh this dress up all the way up here to try and make it stay put, which it kind of does, but I kind of look like I'm, um, Obviously, you could totally glam this up with accessories and add some more crazy makeup, etc. But uh, the sunlight has officially abandoned me, so I am working with the timing that I have, which is not a lot. It's kind of a good adjustment. Obviously, I could wear it just as is like this too. And I feel like that still kind of works because we've got the more punky elements going on here. I don't own anything punk, as you can obviously tell. So I am definitely working with just the grungiest that I can personally go, which is this. If you have more punk clothes in your closet, I'm sure you have a lot more to experiment with, but also because this trend is just recycling another older style, I feel like you can still kind of experiment, follow the blueprint, and make your own adjustments and do your own version. And that's the gist of that. If Punk Rococo wasn't modern enough for you, we've also got the subtle business sensual trend. This one includes more sheer pieces, skin showing, and a generally more daring appearance. I personally am not a huge fan of this trend, but I do have the right pieces for it. So I'm going to be showing you two examples of how to style this. The first one is how other people would recommend to style it, and the second one is how I would personally style it. This is obviously way tamer than most of the business sensual outfits because I am trying to be PG-13 at least, and I'm also not trying to get YouTube to uh, censor me or demonetize me. I did consider pairing a sheer turtleneck underneath a blazer, but it didn't really look quite right, so I wanted to do something that's a little bit more like spring and summerish instead where sheer pieces are honestly way easier to style. Would I go on a date with myself? Yes. Would I go on a second date based on this outfit? Debatable. Overall though, this is closer to how it has been styled on the runway. It's not what I would personally maybe do, although now that I'm looking at it, hmm, it's kind of cute. Maybe I would wear this actually. The runway versions by themselves though, I feel like are way too sheer. And unless your office is an over 18 space, I don't think anybody's going into the office like that. This is closer to how I would style the business sensual look, having a little bit of like that skin showing up here and a little bit of that, whatever this area is, knee. And the rest of the sort of sensuality of it and the sort of businessy look comes from the sharpness of the blazer and the formality of the skirt, as well as, you know, leather boots. 
they add a little bit of a kick to all outfits this one i feel like is way more comfortable for me and also it's more my style and this is closer to how i think i would style this trend obviously you could replace the blazer for something else like a polo or a button-up i'm just going with the blazer because the blazer is something that i usually would have worn in the office if you wanted to make it a little bit more playful you could change the skirt to something else like a tennis skirt or maybe a shorter skirt point being i feel like if you wanted to make this even more daring you could but um we are not trying to cause any problems on this channel so if you want to take it up a notch with the sheer layering, you can try the sheer front trend. If you have unused sheer clothes lying around in your closet like I sure as heck have, you may want to take them out and learn how to layer them with other clothes. My personal rule of thumb is that if it is a skin-hugging sheer piece, you layer it underneath other clothes, but if you feel like a bit of a daredevil, you can layer it on top of more skin-hugging clothes which would probably be underwear at that point. I am not trying any of those underwear trends. Just watch out for the nip slips. I may or may not have flashed people countless times with my nip slips, so um, just another day. <clears throat> Anyways, tops especially are great to layer underneath other pieces such as corset tops, vests or blazers on the contrary if you've got an oversized sheer piece i like to add those on top of other clothes to kind of create a do a double take kind of trick effect i like people going wait a minute there's something else going on here makes me feel special if they look twice because even i need external validation since one of my business central outfits already showed you guys a body hugging version of this concept i'm going to be showing you how i style this with a looser fitting sheer item now this is how I would layer sheer. I feel like this is a nice neutral outfit. It's nothing special. You could totally build this up or even make it more casual if you want to. Although I feel like this is super casual, but maybe that's just me. This is great if it's like spring and summer and you don't really want to be all bare skin showing your shoulders and elbows. Now, obviously this is not the way that you could style the sheer trend, but I feel like this is a nice way for me. I personally don't like to um, show my boobies to the world. I prefer to keep them tucked away and hidden under underneath the sheer layer, underneath a shirt. Let's not forget about my nice mushroom embroidery, not sponsored by Nike, but if Nike would ever like to sponsor me, I am open to it. And yeah, you kind of get that little double take. You're kind of like, oh, she's wearing a nice blue shirt. But wait, there is more. And that's the gist of this outfit. We're connecting the white with the shoes. We're connecting the beige with the off-white socks and the beige shorts. And the blue is just a standalone color, which I appreciate and love. And that's all of my tips and tricks for styling the 2024 trends with clothes you already have in your closet. Let me know what your favorite trends are and how you'd style them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.